one stand part. Mr Chairman. Uh, the Honourable Christopher Funninson. Mr Chairman, the bill has a dual language title and may be cited by either the English or Maori title. Uh, the Honourable Mata Ruanui. Uh, ka che kia ora tata ki roti te whare. Uh, kei te heomana, kei te minita, uh, ngā mema katoa, tēnā kōtua, tēnā tātou katoa. Well, uh, Mr Chair, before I touch on the title and commencement of this bill, I'll take a, the brief opportunity to actually acknowledge um, the quality of the information that the Minister has provided about this bill in the committee stages. Although it's very difficult for us on this side of the House to accept a lot of his explanations in terms of various parts of this bill. But however, that, that is the government's position and uh, that is to be respected. Now what's not been uh, acknowledged in the House throughout this debate is the, the mistake that the Māori Party have made in actually only taking ownership over this particular bill. And it's very important that in the closing stages of this debate, of the committee stage of this debate, that I stand in this House and make comment about that. You see, um, Mr Chair, it's our preference that there's no way you can camouflage the issues in this bill by adding a Māori flavour to the title. The Taku Time one, uh, addition to the Foreshore and Seabed Act, uh, is just not going to sell it amongst the Māori communities, regardless of how the Māori Party members and uh, of the, uh, who have stood to speak to this, uh, to this bill have tried to sell it to, to this House and to the rest of Māori them. Well, the, Māori, the, the, the Labour opposition believes that the more appropriate title for this bill will be the Marine and Coastal Area Foreshore and Seabed Reenactment Bill. Nothing absolutely wrong with that. Myself, the man who's standing in this house speaking from the central North Island, from the Rohe of Mata to Te Alawa and Takitimu, I'd call it the Te Ao Huri Huri Bill. In other words, the backward flip bill, the return to the past bill, because that's exactly what this bill is attempting to do. It stagnates Māori customary rights as of 1840 and allows the, the, the authority of the Crown or of uh, New Zealand by and large to flourish and grow. And that's why when I was asked the question earlier on during the uh, couple of days we've been debating this bill, uh, what's the name of that bill again? I said, well, you know, giving it a Māori flavour just doesn't do it for me because me, uh, to me, kaita whaka hoki whaka muri tato. In other words, the old huri huri bill the one that takes us back into the Stone Age. And a lot of examples have been given uh, by various speakers in this house where, th where we think the Māori Party have gone wrong but refuse to acknowledge it. And uh, we're not here to speak about uh, the previous well, part four of the bill, but certainly some, uh, um, there are some, uh, uh, some members of the Māori Party, and I admit that and acknowledge they have law degrees, um, have not read this bill properly, properly and therefore don't understand the implications and as a result of that don't wish, wish not to uh, stand in this house and acknowledge that they got it right and maybe Hone Harawira uh, is correct in, in challenging them on those particular points. For example, the burden of proof. The burden of proof still rests on Māori no matter how you word it in this bill. And yes, the, while they, those uh, uh, rights that have not been extinguished uh, by the Crown will remain, but you see, Mr Chair, the Crown can actually prove that over 75% of the coastline of Aotearoa isn't subject to uh, protected customer rights because they were extinguished. And I'll give you an example in the Bay of Plenty in Tauranga, uh, Ngai Te Rangi, Ngāti Rangi Nui, Ngāti Pukenga. Our customary rights were extinguished from the period between 1840 and 1865 by way of Lepati. By way of Lepati. And the Crown can prove that. And actually, we're having a difficult job proving that it didn't. And the rest of the country accepts it, previous governments have accepted but and as we negotiate our way through these issues, we're having difficulty having to prove that the Crown did act illegally in our interests. And so, Mr Speaker, when, the, when the, a Māori Party uh, member stands up in this House and says the burden of proof is in the, on the Crown, I have to say, well, you know, get your head out of the sand, come back to earth, because the Crown has no difficulty whatsoever in proving that the rights in certain right, areas of the country were extinguished. It's the same with Tauroa. The Tearawa legs, the return of the Tearawa legs, they had to prove that they had not only ownership pre-1840, oh, sorry, pre-1992, 
but also um, at, the, at the period between 1840 and whenever that was, it was a very difficult and costly exercise for them to go through. And I want to remind the Māori Party members, as the Hone uh, Harawera, who they refused to name, attempted to do, that they did get it wrong. And when they say, make no mistake, bones about it, this is our bill, well, I hope they can stand up and with our conscience in the Māori community and say, yes, we still take ownership of it. Mr Chair? Call the Honourable even though, even though those Māori communities will have to prove they had a customary interest in their particular areas and, uh, and a, maybe, the, maybe the member will tell, tell the pe people from where she comes on top of the South Island that they don't have to prove they had a customary right and they don't have to prove that, that those customary rights were, were extinguished because they were. Because they were in the Crown's currently in negotiations with your people now to, to uh, compensate you for the loss of those rights. What it is about that that those people don't understand. You can, you can put all the nice language, legal jargon in these bills as, as you like, but you still have to front up in court to prove your case. What don't you understand about that? The Crown has no difficulty in turning up to prove that those rights were extinguished. You know, really back down, sometimes these debates can get up to a level where um, Māori practically uh, lose interest in them. And I think my uh, colleague, uh, um, Kelvin Davis, gave some examples of how this affects Māori as the road, rubber hits the road, down, on the down in the communities. Yes, why would any Māori group uh, make an application for the recognition of customer rights to collect hanging stones? Why would they? I had an issue with that in 2004 because it was raised then. Why would any Māori uh, make an application to the High Court to, for the recognition of customer rights so they can launch a waka? I had an issue with that in 2004, I have an issue with it now. They had an issue with it back then, but they refuse to admit it now. You know, show some consistency. Be true to your beliefs. Stand up and speak up. But don't do backward flips and try and convince our people this is a good thing, because it is not. Actually, there are actually no changes. There are changes in the words. But the substance of the bill, in terms of the ability of Māori to prove customary rights, and I've used the word again, prove customary rights, is still very, very difficult. The High Court said that. The Court of Appeal said that. So I'm asking you, know, what, what is it about that you don't understand? The entire South Island was subject to confiscation. All those rights were lost. Ngaitahu have spent decades trying to have those, those rights reinstated. What it is about the member from Tataitonga, what is it about her and her legal background that she can't accept or understand that? I feel, certainly, you know, I have people in, in uh, in the Mata to Atiaraba um, Arohe, who haven't had the privilege of the type of education that that member has had. In fact, they struggle with literacy, but they can work that one out. They can work that one out. Every time they go to the beach to get pippy, they only know, they know that between them, one bucket. They know that when they go and die for a kina, they know one bag. They understand that even though the codification of those rights totally loses them. Totally loses them. And that's why I say to them, when you codify the Aum Māori, you make it, you remove the Aum Māori from the Māori people. Understand that. Because when you codify Tikanga, it doesn't matter who makes the decision or who get the advice from, that is the legal precedent. That's the end of it. What don't you understand about that? Oh, sorry, Mr. I know you understand, Mr. Chair. I'm, not, I'm concerned that the member stands up in this House, tries to pull the wool over our eyes and the rest of Māori them, that's as good for them, when the Aum Māori, as they know it, is slowly disappearing. What is it about that that she will not accept? Because I have difficulty accepting her arguments in the House this afternoon, and I don't often agree with Honda Harawera. Actually, I think he's a bit flighty, and I've told him that many times. But he touched all the right buttons today, and I have difficulty disproving him. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, as we close, as the curtain closes on this particular debate, and I wish I had a lot more time to speak, because there are other members I'd like to address themselves. My phone over there, from Ngātiawa, what are you going to say to them, cuz, when you go back to them and say, I voted for this bill, there's nothing in it for you, but you do get to go to court. It's going to cost 200000 plus your lawyers. You're going to come away with nothing. You're going to come away with nothing because the burden of proof, uh, you're not going to be able to meet the test and uh, all those rights that you say the Crown confiscated, well, the Crown has plenty of evidence to prove that those, uh, those rights were extinguished. And so, Mr Chip, that's my contribution to this debate. I'm very disappointed. And I've sat quietly and listened to the members make their contributions. Very disappointed at the level of ignorance that I've heard in the House today. This is a very simple issue. This is about us, about Māori people. This is about our customary rights. And the codification of those rights changes them. Nothing wrong with going to the courts and arguing your case. But when you codify chikanga, monarchy tanga, all those, all those areas that we hold value, 
then they're no longer ours. Kia ora. I call Paul Quinn.